Hello everybody and welcome back to the Slack and Armchair Supporter channel. I'm here with another match preview video for you. This time it's Atalanta versus Liverpool. And well, we know how the last one finished. This one is just, it's going to be a difficult one to predict. Um, obviously, I don't want to give a negative result against Liverpool. I said I never would, uh, you know, draws maybe. But never, I'd, I'll never predict a loss for Liverpool. But after what's, what I've seen over the last couple of weeks, I just don't know what to do. So before I get into it, please hit that like button, hit, hit that subscribe button. Most importantly, that honestly, everybody seriously makes a difference who subscribes. So thank you so much if you already have. And yeah, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you a match preview. I'm going to break down the game a little bit, how I think it'll go. Then I'll give you a score prediction and then I will give you my lineup prediction. And well, I think... <laughs> I, I think I'm I think I'm onto something here with the lineup. So you'll see later on in the video. So let's get into it. Match preview and how I think it's gonna go. So obviously I still have my notes from last week. Um they didn't come in very handy after we got battered 3-0, did they? Um really was not expecting that result at Anfield last week. That was just unforgivable and embarrassing was the two words I used in the stream, I do believe. And I just hope we at least give a good account of ourselves this time. I mean, I don't see us going through. Um, I have, I've always been a very optimistic Liverpool fan, even when the comeback against Barcelona, was it 2019? I'm not sure. When um, obviously the, the famous one, you know, the corner taken quickly. I was confident that we would win that and we would turn that around. It was 3-0 to Barcelona after the first game. I was confident that we would overcome that because even though we lost 3-0 to Barca at the Camp Nou, we didn't play bad. We actually played really well that game. Barcelona just scored, I wouldn't say lucky goals, obviously they were just moments of class, like Messi's free kick, for instance, or there was one that was a bit sloppy as well that I think... Um, Messi ended up just headed into an empty net because it, it looped over the goalkeeper really nicely and came off the crossbar or something. I remember thinking there were moments of a bit of madness and a bit of just pure skill from the Barcelona players, which don't happen in every game. So if Liverpool were to play like that again at home, at Anfield, we could very well have scored the three, four goals. We did. We got the four goals, went on to win it 4-3 and went through to the... I think it was to the final. That was the semi-final, wasn't it, against Barcelona? Um, and I was confident of that. I knew that was going to happen. This time, I just, I'm just, I don't know what it is. I am just not confident. And the United game was well. It's not the start of it. It's been like this since since we put what six past Sparta Prague. Since then, we just have not been able to score goals. Um, but this United game in the league was it about what 10 days ago or so that's when i really started to see it then again a loss to crystal palace at the weekend but we're not even given a good account of ourselves we're not even showing teams that well you know we can actually do well we're wasting chances useless in possession the passing is poor the decision making is poor nothing is going right we're not given a good account of ourselves if that continues we very may we we may well lose this game as well. Um, I hope we don't. I think that to, this game will be the game that we do hopefully bounce back and start showing people that hang on, we're not just going to die off. Because well, it needs to be this game. It's too if it, if it's after this game, it's too late. Um, so you'll see that in my score prediction, my lineup prediction um, on Atalanta. Since the last game, they had a two-two draw. Um, against Hellas Verona and that was away from home that is that's all that's happened with them um, not a great result for them but then again they might have rested players knowing that this game is far more important um, I didn't look into it that deeply but Liverpool need to really step up and do the same thing now really need to need to go at Atalanta um, so let's get into my lineup prediction um, I think I think it's going to be that. I think Liverpool will come out. Liverpool will put on a good show. 
but I think it won't be enough. I don't think it'll be enough. I think, I think Atalanta will just do it. Um, I don't. I just don't think we've got enough. We're just not scoring enough goals, and I just don't. You know, after the three nil defeat, you expect the. You expect you know, an answer then against Crystal Palace. You expect you know, sort of like a bit of a retaliation, a bit of like, no, hang on, that's not us. We're not that bad. Come out against Crystal Crystal Palace and send a message. We didn't. We done the exact same thing. Fell into the exact same traps. And we were lucky. If it weren't for the passion of Andy Robertson, it would have been worse. It would have been worse. The forwards can't score as well, which is very, very worrying. Because if you can't score goals, you will not win games. And this one, we need to score four goals. We need to score three unanswered goals to get a draw. It's a big ask, a big ask. And I just don't see it coming from these players, um, especially not this week. So... That's what I've gone with. That's hopeful, me doing that. That means Atalanta would still go through 4-2 um, on aggregate. So let's get into my lineup. Um, this is a lineup that I think could go and beat Atalanta. Not enough to... I mean, if, if it does happen, it'd be great. Trust me, I'd be really happy if we do go on and we go and beat them 5-0, 5-1, whatever. And this lineup, will it, it, this lineup could do that, but I just, I just really cannot see it. Um, I hope it does happen. I just don't see it. So I'm trying to just be a bit more realistic than a bit too optimistic, if you know what I mean, guys. So this is my lineup in full. So this is what I believe can go and beat Atalanta in Italy. Allison in goal. He's back. Um, yeah. Um, well, was the world's best keeper before he got injured. Let's hope his form continues. Um, Kelleher has done brilliant while he's been gone. Let's just give him a bit of praise while Allison's been gone. Absolutely outstanding the way he stepped up. But Allison back now. He is the number one. He should be in there. And yeah, hopefully, um, again, some brilliant saves against um, Palace as well at the weekend. You know, Keller has also done the same thing, so I can't really like compare the two because Keller has also provided some fantastic saves. So can't really, you know, say this one does this and this one does that. They're but they've both been great. But Allison, I don't know, he's a bit older, a bit more mature, hopefully a bit just hopefully just a bit more of leadership as well on the pitch. Um and hopefully that calmed down the defence a bit as well, because we've been a bit porous at the back. Then, of course, left-back Robertson. He is Honestly, he looks like he's the only player who believes Liverpool are in a title race or like fighting for trophies. He is the only person who is dying on the pitch um, for the badge at the moment. Nobody else seems to care. Robertson, though, passion. All, just all the, way, all the way down that wing, he's got passion. So Robertson has to start this game for me. Then a centre-back pairing of Virgil and Gomez. Um, I think Canate was... I didn't see the game on Sunday, the Palace game. All I'd done was I heard the second half on the radio and then I watched the highlights. But Canate looked poor. Um, it looked like he was getting the better of in the air, um, on the ground. It just didn't matter. Anything that was going through him, he just looked like he was out of depth, like he was tired or just a bit lethargic or something. So I think he needs to be dropped. And I'd put Gomez in there. Gomez... Has been brilliant this season, admittedly not great the last few weeks, but put him in his centre back place where he belongs, and I think he'll give you a bit of a bit of calmness and a bit of uh, maturity in defence alongside Van Dyke, and then of course the returning Trent Alexander Arnold at right back. Um, also, yeah, because if I heard rightly, I believe Connor Bradley got injured as well against Palace. Um, like I said, I didn't watch it. Um, as I as I got it on the radio, they were talking about him coming off for Trent. So just in time, really. Thank God the injury to Bradley didn't come before. But obviously a speedy recovery to him because he's been another one who has really stepped up in the absence of the senior players. Then in midfield, I've gone with McAllister, Saboslai and Gakpo because I think Gakpo has been brilliant. He's actually been one of our best forwards the last couple of weeks where everybody else has fallen off. He's actually stepped up. 
it would have been great if he was already up there for the the whole season. But he had a bit of a, you know, he sort of took the foot off the gas a bit, you know, for the last few few months. But then the last few performances, I've been really impressed with Gakpo. He's actually another one I've been impressed with alongside Robertson. So I think if he starts in midfield, because that's where he has actually been playing, he's been dropping deep to collect the ball and then go forward. I didn't um I didn't hear enough from Jones this weekend either. Um wasteful should have scored that chance as well. I'm not sure how he has not scored that chance. So wasteful. A Gakpo scores that. Um even in bad form Gakpo scores that. Um so I think Gakpo in midfield behind the front three will actually be creative enough. You've also then going to have Sabosly on there who alongside Trent Trent's going to come back and also like improve Sabosla. Sabosla's looked weak because Trent can just be creative with him and like aid him in the creativeness. Where Bradley I didn't feel was when he first that first game against Chelsea where he put that man in a match performance in, he got the goal and the two assists. Fair enough, yeah. He was and he was really good down the right wing. But then I don't know, it became a bit um predictable and so he was a bit sort of marked out of it. So therefore Sabosla was then having to do more work. I think Trent will aid Sabosli into being more creative and we'll start to see the best of Sabosli again. Hopefully that will happen. So you're going to have a really creative like front five, six there. Um, and Endo, I dropped Endo because, well, he looked like he was having a shocker as well against Palace. Um, so probably just tiredness, just needs a bit of a break. Hopefully that's it. McAllister come in, do the number six job, which we know he can do as well because he's been brilliant there as well. Then up top, Diaz, Jota and Salah. I am sick to the back teeth of watching Salah and Nunes waste chance after chance. Diaz isn't much better. I'm not. I'm really not fond of Diaz. I mean, he scored the goal against United, but that looked like that just sort of hit off him and went into the goal more than anything, more than by judgment. It was more by luck than by judgment. So... And yeah, other than that, he just seems to run around like a headless chicken. And I just, we need people who are precise and who are gonna, you know, they have intent. Diaz just seems to just go off crazy running. And yeah, fair enough. Sometimes you need that, especially in a high press. But then when it comes to playing in the killer pass to somebody, just lovely to somebody to come and step on, he then misses that pass. And it's just so frustrating. But Salah and Nunes, there's no excuse for him. One of them has to be dropped. It's not going to be Salah. It's going to be Nunes. Again, another chance that he missed, that Nunes missed against Palace. Could have equalised. Just didn't. I, I know Salah's wasted chances as well. But I just don't see Salah being dropped. Um, and also Jota coming in to replace Nunes. Because Jota, while well, he is the assassin, we do call him the assassin. Hopefully he brings a bit more of that back to Liverpool. Liverpool need goals. And, well, we need Jota to go and get another hat-trick against Atalanta, don't we? So, my lineup in full. Allison, Robertson, Van Dijk, Gomez, Trent, McAllister, Gakpo, Sobosly, Diaz, Jota and Salah. Um, again, I think that's the team that can go and get five goals against Atalanta. Whether they will or not. I don't think so. Hopefully, like my fingers are crossed. I do hope so, but I just don't have the confidence in my body like I did, like I said against the Bar in the Barcelona game. But I still think that that's a team that will go and get the result against Atalanta. Whether it's enough to send us through to the next round, I don't know. We'll need to see if they've actually finally started practicing some shooting or something. Um, yeah. So guys, let me know how I done. That's how I think the game's gonna go. That's my score prediction. That's my lineup prediction. Honestly. Get in the comments. Let me know what you think. If you think I'm absolutely mad, if I've made a good point, if I've made a bad point, let me know. And yeah, keep the dialogue going. Thanks so much for tuning in. Really appreciate it. Don't forget to hit that like button. Please subscribe. That is the most important button you can press. It's free, it's easy, and it makes my life so much better. So thanks again. And until I see you again, live stream, actually, I will be live for this one. I did miss the Crystal Palace game, but I'll be live for this. 18th of April, I'll be starting that up on uh, about half past seven, like I normally do. I look forward to seeing you in there. And until then, up the fucking Reds.